Welcome back to the King's Corner, the place for all things Bethesda. I am the King Fan Man. And hey, if you love Bethesda and you're not a subscriber yet to the King Fan Man channel, why not? I talk about Bethesda all the time. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell too so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Today I have something very, very special for you. In the past I did a series that was well received called Fallout 76 Scary Places. Well, this series is going to be kind of like that. It's called Fallout 76 Real Places, where I show you the history and the people behind the locations in Fallout 76. Now today we go to a very, very unique place. In game, it is called the Palace of the Winding Path. In real life, it is simply called the Palace of Gold. The Palace of Gold, or sometimes simply called the Palace by locals, is located in the beautiful mountains of Marshall County, West Virginia, near the town of Moundsville. It is a very odd sight, to say the least, and to say it stands out from its surroundings is a complete understatement. It has been called America's Taj Mahal. Of course, in Fallout 76, it is known as the Palace of the Winding Path. In real life, it is the town of Vrindavan. New Vrindavan is named after a holy city in India. And although it has hundreds of residents, it is not a city. It is an unincorporated town set aside as an international community. Today, the land consists of over 1,200 acres of gorgeous buildings, landscapes, lakes, homes, apartment buildings, a number of businesses and farms, and even a cemetery. It is truly a real self-sustaining community nestled deep in the West Virginia Appalachian Hills. This extraordinary mountaintop was not always so beautiful. During the 1950s and early 60s, this mountain was owned by Richard Rose Jr. and was nothing more than farmland and clear cuts. A clear cut, of course, is where a logging company comes and cuts down every single tree. They are taken and used either for lumber or paper. Needless to say, it leaves the land very exposed and ugly. And to make matters even worse, people from the nearby towns of Moundsville and Wheeling, West Virginia, were using a part of this land as a trash dump. All this began to change in the year 1968, when this land was acquired by Swami Bhaktapad. Now, Bhaktapad is the founder and leader of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. Bhaktapad was actually born Keith Gordon Ham on September the 6th, 1937 in Peekskill, New York, about 90 minutes north of New York City. He was the youngest son of a conservative Baptist preacher, and his mom always said that he himself would one day make a great preacher. At 15, he left his happy home for a boarding school. It was during his high school years that Keith got very sick and was hospitalized. He was eventually diagnosed with polio, and though he would recover, he would be left with serious mobility issues for the rest of his life. He returned back to school, but he began to drink very heavily, and by age 18, his lifestyle was in complete contrast to his upbringing. In 1955, Keith graduated from high school and moved to Knoxville, Tennessee and began attending Maryville College. But it wasn't long before he was kicked out of his dorm for reportedly smoking and partying. He and his parents had a huge falling out with one another over this issue. Keith even wrote his father a letter, rejecting both he and his mother and their religious teachings. His lifestyle soon spiraled out of control and into debauchery. With heavy drug use, alcoholism, sexual addiction, and more. This kind of lifestyle, of course, left Keith very empty and deeply depressed. In 1966, Keith found the teachings of Hare Krishna, which would change his life forever. 
1967, the very charismatic Keith Ham was advancing in the teachings of Krishna so well that he moved to India and was made a Swami near the top of the order in Vrindavan, India, the birthplace of Krishna. But it wasn't long before Keith, now named Bhaktapad, had a falling out with his leader in India and defiantly left India going back to the group of followers in New York. Keith had a plot to set himself up as their leader, but they rejected him and even expelled him from their order. In March of 1968, Keith saw an ad in the paper for land in West Virginia. Richard Rose Jr. was looking to lease the land to anyone who would settle it. 1968 was the height of the counterculture hippie movement in America. And Richard, the owner of the land, envisioned a place where all people could come, no matter their religion or beliefs, and find fellowship and peace. Upon arriving in West Virginia, Keith loved the land and had huge ambitions for its future. He promised to follow Richard's wishes for the land, but knowing all along he planned to build a huge Krishna temple. In fact, he wanted to build a complete replica of the town in India he had lived in, Vrindavan. This is how the land in West Virginia eventually gets his name, New Vrindavan. He signed a 99-year lease for the land. So Keith, who is calling himself Bhaktapad Swami, soon reached out to his former leader. Remember the one he defiantly left in India? Well, he wanted help, financial help, in order to get to building on the land in West Virginia. So how did this charismatic Swami get his former Swami to accept him back in good favor and get financial help? Well, he promised to devote the glorious temple to his former leader. Well, that was just enough, and Keith was back in business. Keith and a small group of followers began work on the town in 1968. It wasn't long before the landowner was furious when he found out that everyone on his land was a follower of Krishna. He had wanted a place for all faiths. For the next few years, their numbers steadily grew, and they began to farm the land and quickly became a self-reliant community. Money was also rolling in, because every member of the community would give up all their earthly possessions upon entering citizenship in New Vrindavan. In 1972, they had raised enough money to begin construction on the palace. Now, they would begin the project with $600,000 worth of materials, and all the work was to be completed by the members of the community. It would take seven years and $2.1 million to complete this magnificent structure. From 1979, with the completion of the palace, to 1987, also known as the Golden Age of New Vrindavan, the community thrived. The property expanded to over 2,500 acres and over 600 resident devotees of all ages. They were completely self-sustaining with many farms and farm animals of all kinds, plus shops where residents could trade for all their needs. In just a few short years, this rugged piece of land, isolated in the West Virginian hills, had gone from one small shack with no electricity to a place that CNN called America's Taj Mahal and one of the eight religious wonders of the USA. It was not only a place where new devotees were flocking to, it was also open for tourists and thousands were coming to see this new wonder, the Palace of Gold. Money continued to flow into New Vrindavan too much money, and it was found later that their leader, Swami Keith, acquired over $10 million just for himself in the first four years he was there. And that's not counting the almost $3 million he raised and gave for construction of the palace. So how was he getting all that money? 
Well, it's already been said that he would get all the worldly possessions of the community's members. But this even falls way short of the 13 million he had obtained in those short four years. According to former members, Keith had slowly built a personal cult for himself, funded by illegal activities that included alleged drug running, prostitution, mail fraud, and even murder. By 1987, many in the community became disenchanted with Keith's leadership, and some began to leave. In 1988, even the wider Krishna community outside of New Vrindavan blacklisted both Keith and the whole community. Former members again reported that Keith was carried around on a jeweled seat and all the devotees would bow when he passed by. They were forced to work 14 to 18 hours a day for no pay. He also ordered the construction of an arsenal so they could make weapons to defend the community from any outsiders. In 1990, Keith was arrested and indicted for mail fraud, pedophilia, and conspiring to murder two of his followers. He was later allowed to plea bargain and plead guilty for racketeering while still denying a role in the killings. He was eventually sentenced to 20 years in a North Carolina prison and he was barred for life from Krishna and his mountain commune in West Virginia. Now after this episode throughout the 1990s and early 2000s the numbers at New Vrindavan continued to dwindle but the ones that remained began to rebuild it and to restore their public image. According to a 2010 U.S. Census, the population of New Vrindavan was 352. In 2011, they began a large restoration of the palace and the grounds. It would take $4.5 million and hours and hours of work to bring this amazing place back to its original splendor. The Palace of Gold is not just gold in color, but it is made with 22 karat gold leaf on its domes and other places. They also spared no expense with replacing and fixing the exotic onyx, teak, crystal, and 17 different kinds of marble from 17 different countries. And all of these beautiful things fills the interior and the exterior of this beautiful complex. In the year 2000, the town was taken off the blacklist and accepted back into the Krishna faith. And during the next 10 years, restoration would be completed along with the construction of a new temple on the grounds, the Radha Gopanath Temple, which is the first of a seven temples project. In 2018, New Vrindaban celebrated its golden day, reminiscent of its glory days back in the early 1980s. And in January of 2021, as the Krishnas observed 40 years in their Marshall County home, their joy was twofold as a several year undertaking to have the Palace of Gold recognized on the registry as a historic place was approved. Today, New Vrindaban is supported by a growing congregation and they often host grand festivals, conferences, and an estimated 50,000 tourists and pilgrims each year. And it just so happens to be the largest Hare Krishna group in all of America. So the next time you visit the palace, you will now know the real story behind this gorgeous landmark of West Virginia and the people who built it.